ZBrush has been the industry standard for sculpting for quite some time now, but with each update, Blender is growing closer and closer, and 3.5 brings us a lot closer with the introduction of a new feature called VDM Brushes, or Vector Displacement Map Brushes. This video is sponsored by Rococo, and today we're actually going to walk you through how to use this feature yourself, but first let's dive into what exactly is Vector Displacement Data. Now what vector displacement data allows is for you to have overhanging geometry, allowing you to actually store information underneath so that you can develop almost full models from a single brush rather than your typical one-to-one -one height based information. The developers have actually been nice enough to give us a baking setup file that we can use to bake our own brushes. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. I went ahead for myself and did a quick test by doing a little stylized rock sculpt within this setup and then bake that and was able to test it so that it could kind of get rocks with more overhang. And you could see how with, with a rock brush pack, you could actually generate entire scenes with detailed geometry pretty quickly. So when you download the file, this is the setup that you're going to see. And you'll see here that we have this hook that has been sculpted out of this plane which is a product of having that extra geometry because of the multi-res. So if you'd like to make your own brush like I did with the stone, just go ahead, delete this multi-res, create a new multi-res version on this plane, and then go ahead and sculpt there. The reason it's important to use a multi-res is because you need to have the same UV maps for your baking setup. And you won't be able to do that with voxel remeshing. So I just want to point that out. Now you'll want to add a multi-res and sculpt from there if you'd like to create your own brush. So let's look at how we'd go about creating your own brush from there. Now with this project file, everything's already set up with the shader. And if you come over here, we have the baking option here and our bake type is set to emit with view from above surface. But we need to go ahead and create an image. Now you can go as low as 512 by 512. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at the default 24. So we're going to call this BDM brush. And then down here, you want to make sure that you check this 32 bit float. We'll go ahead, check that, hit OK. And now we can bake into this image here. So if we come down here and we scroll down to our VDM brush, you'll see that we have a black background. So in your shader window, make sure that you have this image right here selected. And then you're going to grab this plane here. And then we're going to tell Blender to bake. By having both of these selected, we're telling it to bake this onto this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit bake here. And you'll see that it's created an image here. So now what we need to do is go ahead to image, save as, and then we need to set our file type. So we're gonna set our file type to open XR. And what we're going to do is go to RGB, leave float to half, pick a name, and then you're going to save that image. Now, once you're in your sculpting setup, you can use this as a brush texture. So what you wanna do is down on these texture settings here, go ahead and open that VDM brush. You wanna make sure that clamp is turned off and color space is set to linear. And then you should be able to just go ahead and begin sculpting on your objects with that data. And you can see that now we're getting that curve all the way around and that overhang. So this elevates Blender yet closer to ZBrush and being a potential alternative to ZBrush for people. Now where I think ZBrush has a large advantage is that it has a huge brush library to start with and that is included in the pack. However, I have faith in the Blender community that we'll probably end up seeing lots of free packs and very affordable packs full of VDM brushes after 3.5 has been out for a while. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Rococo provided me a full set of their suit with facial motion capture, hand capture, and body capture. Now Rococo uses a magnetic based system to detect its motion and it works over Wi-Fi, which is awesome because what this means is that anywhere with a laptop, computer, or Wi-Fi connection, you can record high quality motion capture data without the need of a multi-million dollar studio. If you're familiar with Ian Hubert's and his Blender channel, he uses it in his videos to help motion capture and apply that data to some of his humanoid characters. I've actually been using this on some of my VR work for prototyping and recording my hands to be in the foreground. Rococo offers incredibly high quality studio level motion capture data at a much more affordable price than the competition. Now, if you're not interested in buying an entire motion capture setup, you can actually check out their library, which has affordable options to download a ton of animations that you can use in your games, animations, visual effects, and more. Of course, I'll link to everything below so you can check it out and let me know what you think in the comments below.